Ah, uh, there's nothing better to hang out in your gear shed <laughs> in the heart of winter. I've got my summer stuff, I've got my winter stuff, i got adventures galore. But I'm going to be at the Toronto Outdoor Adventure Show this year talking about the top 70 canoe routes of Ontario. You know, you, you know this guy? Yes, Self hello, propelled. Tosh. Uh, the Dutch Explorer, Hello. he's world renowned. <laughs> this guy, I don't know who he is at all. Yeah. Yeah. I, just need, I need the measurements. How did I get him. roped into this? I don't know, but <laughs> you're looking pretty good. <laughs> Mama's got a squeeze box she wears under her chest. When Daddy goes home, gets home, she never gets no rest. Playing all night, music's all right. Come on, Sean. Mama's got a squeeze box, Daddy's gonna feel all right. I'm about. Battle. I'm about to paddle. Oh, I'm so perturbed. I'm about to sign a carbon bench shaft. Oh, it's know. like it's like a little bit of sacrifice. Right? It's like talking to the devil. Andy still has an attitude. Yeah. It was good. It was a good show. That's all I got to say. We're exhausted. I uh, sold all my books. I had a lot of people come out to my shows. I met a lot of good friends after. Not seeing them for th for three years because of the pandemic, and um, yeah, it was really good to be, to be back. Actually, it's all kind of a blur uh, to actually uh, have that happen. It's like all of a sudden, wow, uh, I haven't seen you for so long. So it was really good. A lot of good friends here in the United States. A lot of great paddlers. Good paddling community uh, in Madison, and um, I can't believe that Andy and I are still talking to each other. Then you had a question or two for me. Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, um, you know, I was going to ask you the typical things about what got you to Woodlands Travel and what are your influences. Uh, but I think the one important question has always been in my head the last couple of days when I wanted to talk to you is I've known you as an incredible filmmaker, a poet, uh, a writer, uh, an artist. In fact, someone even called you the Lou Reed of the documentary filmmaking. And I just think that really is kind of cool that that matches, right? So the next thing you know, there's four blocks of bourbons lined up at Harrington Lake. The Mounties are in them. They're revving the engines. Prime Minister gets in one of them, and I'm told to follow. I have a 2007 Explorer. It's 10, 15 years old at that time. It's rickety, and they're flying down the Meech Lake Road at ridiculous speeds, gravel spewing all over the place. They get on to number five, and they go into assassination evasive moves. In other words, they're going down and they're shifting like this all the time, all the way down the highway. I say, oh, what the hell am I going to do here? So, Kevin, I cut my Bennick with a knife Ooh. because it because it comes out a lot like real bread. And if I want to slice a sandwich, I know this is wrong. So I'm not really making Bannock. I'm making bread like Bannock or Bannock like bread or something. It's not it's not real Bannock, I guess. But, but that means bad things will come upon you. Like you'll dump in a rapid. Or there'll be more bugs in the yeah, just because I'm, I'm just because I did that. I'm um, I'm a risk taker, Kev. Risk taker. <laughs> and then the next year we did in search of the perfect campsite. I got to edit that, and still holds up today. And Lloyd just watched it the other day, and uh, and we did these camping comedies for the amphitheaters when you went camping, and uh, you sit in these little amphitheaters and own swat flies and watch a movie, you know the old projector and all the scraping lines on the film because it wasn't clean. And that's what people did. And there was about 50 or 70 of these across Ontario. So we made films for the amphitheaters. According to my digital, we should have had the tent up by now. But then we were, you know, maybe a half mile down the river and we just hear a full clip of gunshots unloaded. So, I mean, they weren't lying about having a gun and they wanted us to know it after they left but the compass didn't work and failed us. It was like, I've never had that happen before. And it's quite literally the worst spot on the trip for this to happen. So that moment I was like, are we going to get out of the swamp tonight? So what was the route? Lake Erie, right? To what? What? Oh, well, starting on Lake Erie and roughly 3,400 kilometers north to the Arctic coast of Ungava Bay, uh, which is in Arctic Quebec or Nunavik. Uh, that was the end point. So do you want me to explain the whole route or is that enough detail? Like you shot a lot of film, obviously, right? What was yeah. the uh, the one scene individually? Uh, what was the one scene where you're like, oh, come on, they didn't use that? What the? Uh, that's, oh, a, that's a good question. Go ahead, oh, Mike. Yeah. Okay. So that that's the reason I was asking you too, because uh, Cade went out there and made arrows. 
I made arrows. I made mm-hmm. arrows with bone tips, with glass tips, with wooden tips. I'm talking about, okay, and they didn't show any of them. This is a pack light Titan two and one. Ta-da! All right, and um, so I'm going to show you some some good things about it. First of all, the biggest thing I like about it, well, two biggest things I like about it. Before I even get into the whole thing, is that it's got this to hang it up with. It's arrived! It's arrived! It's here! Finally, it's about uh, to hit the hit the backcountry near you, Ooh. and um, so very shortly this will be available. It's a bit of a celebration idea born from um, ten year anniversary of our trip around Algonquin Park, and there is a reason for all this. Yeah, and part of that, uh, the big reason, is to give back really to the paddling community. So that's all bundled into this announcement. So yeah, so then I did this, the Happy Camper, paddle with Badger, and money goes to Project Canoe, which is a Toronto-based group that actually takes youth out. Youth probably would never get out in the woods for various reasons. editing this so I guess. That's true. I just stepped on his speedo. No, don't step Woo! on the crutch. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> well, cheers. No longer oh. tea. We moved to the world of apple juice. Yes. I'm drinking my own urine. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna throw a whole pile at you because we got lots of questions about gear and so Okay, I'll try and be fast. Alright. Here's a good idea. Hey Kev, let's go out uh, uh, in, in uh, beginning of May. The bugs won't be bad at all. Yeah. And while we're there, can we, you know, we can film some new stuff of what, what you're bringing out while the black flies are buzzing around my, inside of my ear. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. And it seems like it's going to rain real soon. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You can, you can handle this wilderness, don't worry. I know, it seems like just like a normal trip for us. <laughs> <laughs> you have to discipline yourself, to tie up your boat when you get to the portage or to the campsite and, um, and but a bow line bag really makes that easy to happen. <laughs> this is the life of recreational barrel works. It's hell. <laughs> you leave that dog alone, Angel. And you, Oliver, settle down. Okay, this is funny. Mother clucking Excuse me? Skillet. What'd you say? I'm just reading. Mother clucking skillet. We're having second coffees. Oh, awesome coffee. Yep. We're going exploring again today. That's right. Yep. Hopefully we can catch more fish than we did yesterday. You just have to let it go. Just okay. let I it know. go. But I don't want to let Tim down. That's true. He's excited for a shawl lunch and I hope we can deliver. Right. I actually got the first fish. Oh, oh that's a big lake trout. Oh my god, you better get the net. Yeah, I got the net. Hold on. Well, don't don't force them. Nope. That's a nice lake trout. sticky so that's where it is there okay that's one yes kill yeah buggy 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 <laughs> how you doing andy good. you ripped your pants i ripped my pants <laughs> It is Phil, Highway 7, you show to run, Portage is there but starts on private property, so we're walking again. Hey Chris, I'm out of your boat, man. Right. It's a little stretch. 
Oh, Kevin, what did you do? Well, it was the river's fault. There you go, tough stuff, Nova crap. All right. Awesomeness. I really don't like scotch, and I'm not just saying that, so you know that for real, I don't. If I swish the lime around in it. Okay. <laughs> does that help? There's a lot of lime in there, too. I'm hoping that helps. Yeah, I can drink that. Okay, Christine told me to calm down on the wood issue, but now she's <laughs> going over and... <laughs> like, this is a lot of money. It, it cost me, like, around 30 bucks to get, like, three bags of wood. Right? That That's a lot of money. Okay, so here we go. Well, all I'm saying is, like, it's garbage wood. This is garbage. Oh, look at me go with this now. I ran out of battery in the camera. <laughs> Some more hot air? <laughs> Do I look like Hap Wilson? No. <laughs> I'm not as sexy as Hap Wilson. No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. You're right. I'm not as sexy as Hap Wilson. <laughs> you notice how Adam does that? He he builds up like all the good things. Yeah. You know? First fish, biggest fish. You'll never catch anything. No, and yet never. we're catching what a lot more than you were. I did Excuse switch me. a lot. Yeah. I was trying to find the right magic bait today. Um, you want to know everything? I caught all my fish on the wacky worm. The, the mm -hmm. same worm. I didn't, didn't even change it. You didn't even change it. Wow. <laughs> the first fish we catch on a worm, we lost the worm, and then our other worms weren't shaking as they fell. Wait a minute. Is that a loon calling, or is that, is that Ben crying? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> and they're so excited. I love it because when I went to their country and did rivers and, and on in Scotland and. Wales and England, I was so excited and they were kind of looking at me like, what is wrong with you? Like, this is like normal. To me, this is normal. To them, this is not normal. I love Canada. We're going across a big crossing here and I wasn't sure what channel to take. I even have my GPS on and I go, just follow that kayak. He seems to know where he's going. <laughs> oh. You know what? Don't sweat it. That one got dinged. <laughs> Let's get you good at it. <laughs> oh my god. I want to see the playback though. I was out here the other night with this thing and uh, some neighbors complained that I had a fire going. <laughs> Love them. Look in the bits. We're stopping to put someone's fire out. They didn't extinguish it before they left. Welcome to the south arm of Obiango. Sometimes they don't eat the lures you've got, right? So yep. instead of messing around, retime, like, oh, I wonder what yep. you, you, yep. have, you have some options. And so if you cast out a spot, you're like, there should be fish here, or you can see them on the fish finder. Yep. You cast out, they're not biting. You got another one ready to go right right away. Boom, get it in the water. And that's how, that's how you catch the fish and win fishing competitions. That's why I've got two. Also, fishing rods are like tools. So you need the right tool for the job. You're not gonna bring a sledgehammer to try and fill screw the house. in a, a Phillips screw. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you need an extra sensitive rod to work that really light lure. Sometimes you re really need like a heavy rod with like a not a lot of bend, like a pool cue, in order to like throw those big heavy baits and to set the big heavy hooks and the big heavy fish. They so mechos look like the clumpets of the fishing world, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. Well, Ash caught a walleye. This walleye. What was that on? Uh, just a jig, just white jig. White jig. I didn't even know he was on. Oh, yeah, they're white jigs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've done as well. Oh my god, this is a huge fish. <laughs> it's a walleye. Holy s. <laughs> another walleye. Oh, yeah, the biggest one yet. Oh my god. Really nice bass. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh my. <laughs> what uh? What did we catch those walleye on? Do you remember? <laughs> white grubs. White uh, Mr. Twisters. Yep. And my fishing rod cost me fourteen nine nine at Canyon Tire. And mine probably didn't cost that much more. <laughs> and they're still out there. Yeah. They uh, bless them. Well, I'm not sure if you heard. 
all the controversy, all the debate going on in the canoe uh, world right now. Uh, Dennis from Canoe Hound Adventures had uh, his regular Tuesday night uh, podcast uh, on uh, YouTube, and it was about uh, PFDs and safety, wearing your, your life jacket while in a canoe. And they had a constable on there saying, yes, it might be mandatory, probably not for a while, but they are looking at it because it saves lives. So there's some good points on both sides. I thought I'd just put this together just to make a point. In 65 days a year, most everybody in Richland Village, Michigan, gathers at the Parkview to talk about the burning issues of the day. These days, there is only one. I think everybody's in too much shock to explain it. It is a new life jacket. Ordinance. If the town council gets its way, life jackets will be mandatory for everybody riding in the front seat of a car through Richland. I'll have to detour the town to get to Kalamazoo. They pass this life jacket. Or just I don't use life jacket. I would wear my life jacket. I get caught, I get caught, I guess. The Richland Village Council meets one night each month, and hardly anyone but the council ever attends these meetings, which may be why so many people were so shocked when they read in a local paper that the council had unanimously requested an ordinance the community is almost unanimously opposed to. For such a small town, one mile square, 435 people, Richland gets lots of traffic, though nobody can remember the last time there was a serious accident. But if everybody has to buckle up or pay a $10 fine, businessmen say they'll stop and shop and get their hair cut somewhere else. Customers agree. You maybe stop there, don't put your white jacket on, and you move a little bit further up. I stop here by him, then I move around the corner quick to go to the hardware store, and I don't have to see white jacket. And all of a sudden, somebody sees me, says that cost you $10. Why bother? I think many of them are mad enough about it so that they're not going to run the risk of a ticket. Meanwhile, the town council is standing by its guns people think that they're going to be harassed and, and this is not our intent at all. Their intent, they say, is to save lives and set a good example. There's an election here in March. By then, the town's two police officers will likely be enforcing a new city ordinance. After then, there might be a new city. I oppose it on the basis that it replaces the free will of the individual with the desires of the state. You can't, you can't force people to do things, you know. If they think that it's necessary, they do it. If they don't think so. The question here is whether we have the right, whether we have the responsibility, whether we have the judgment to turn to the citizens of this state and be there in 1984, big brother. Because <laughs> I'm poking the bear, poking the bear.